Hello, Mr. Bill Poker Peeps. Welcome to the vlog. Hey, just a little story for you here. <clears throat> when I started playing poker back in 2011, I thought it'd be a lot of fun and I wanted to do well. And I did really, really well. And in 2014, I went to the World Series of Poker for the first time. I thought, you know what, I'm gonna see how I stack up against these pros, because maybe someday I'd like to do that. Well, the 2014 World Series Poker was fantastic for me. I won probably over $50,000. I had my base cash ever, $34,000 in an event. And I immediately knew that I would never, ever want to play professionally. <laughs> There were just so many guys that played professionally that were absolutely miserable. Uh, whether it was the pressure, or they get jaded, or whatever, and I realized that's just not for me. I always want to be fun and love the game and have fun at the game, and a lot of what I saw in Vegas, it just was not what I would consider fun. So, when I started this vlog in 2017, I thought, you know what, I want to be me. And I had a few goals when I started this thing. One of them was that when people saw me, that I would be exactly the same guy in person that I was in the videos. I wanted to continue to enjoy the game and show that on my videos, that I enjoyed the game, that I had fun, that I liked the thinking part, that I liked the interaction with players, that I liked all of those social things too. And since that time, I've met a number of the guys who do vlogs. I met Brad Owen and Andrew Neamey, uh, the Trooper. And this past weekend, I met uh, the Solve for Why guys and Matthew Liu. We'll hear more about that in my next vlog. Um, <laughs> but about two weeks ago, I played a session with Trevor Savage of Raising the Nuts at the Hideaway Club in Carrollton, Texas. He's already put his vlog out. I think I said mentioned that last week. And I have to say, Trevor was one of the nicest, best guys guys that I've ever played with. He is not one of the jaded professionals because he just liked to have fun and was just really a good guy. So this vlog, I'm going to talk about the session that we had at the hideaway and give you a few other things that I learned. So I got called for a one-two table. I was literally there for five minutes when somebody at one of the one-three tables, which Trevor happened to be sitting at, said they wanted to switch tables. So I raised my hand. I volunteered because the our reason I went there was to play uh, with Trevor. So I got at that table and here we go. All right, we're at the highway on, what is it, Friday, February 28th. I got Trevor Savage. I got Wayne Robinette right here. Look at the cats and dogs all at the same table. Here we go. I bought in for $800, very first hand. I'm under the gun. I have king of clubs, jack of spades. I make it $15. Trevor says, hey, if Mr. Bill's in, I'm in too. Two other guys say that. <laughs> so there's $64 to the flop, and it comes ace of diamonds, seven of hearts, five of spades. Not very ideal for king jack when I'm in the first position. I have to check. Trevor makes a bet, and we all fold. Couple hands later, my second hand, I have ace of diamonds, three of diamonds on the button with $780. An early position player makes it 15. I raise it up to 45. That player makes the call. The flop with 94 in the pot comes eight of clubs, nine of clubs, 10 of clubs. Again, not ideal. He leads out for $65. Not much I can do here. I fold. So, nearly in orbit later, I'm in the hijack with nine of diamonds, seven of diamonds, a stellar hand. There is an under the gun straddle for $6. There's two callers. Ah, I can mix it up here. I make it $45. Uh, Trevor, raising the nuts, savage, makes it $115. Everybody folds. He comes around to me, I say, all right, I got caught. I have to fold my hand too. So, not a great start at this game. Ah, but the beauty of poker, right? You can be running bad, and then all of a sudden, one hand changes everything, and that might happen right here. I'm on the button with nine of diamonds, nine of hearts, $650. There's three limpers. The hijack makes it $35. I make the call. Uh, comes back around, and one of the early position players makes the call also. So the flop with 118 in the pot comes. Nine of clubs, three of hearts, two of hearts. I flop, top set. Middle position one makes it $70. The hijack then shoves all in for $355. Woohoo! I decide I don't want the flush draws to continue, so I shove all in. Yeah, do you have. Hold on, don't say anything. I have a player. You have a fold in. Comes back to the early position. He tanks for a little bit and folds. I'm about to try because he's really confident. No, I'm. Uh, whether I win, lose, or draw, I need to get this on the film. Have? 
So there's $900 in the pot and the board runs out. Four of spades, ace of spades. I show my set of nine. I have a set of nines. And he mucks. So all this time I was in seat eight. Uh, Trevor was in seat one. My buddy Brant was in seat four. So every time I want to talk to Trevor, I have to kind of look around the dealer and talk that way, which was not ideal. I still got to talk to him, which was nice. But then the lady in seat two decided to get up and leave. I said, I take that seat. <laughs> and I did it for a number of reasons. Obviously, I want to sit next to Trevor and talk to him, get to know him because he seems like such a good guy. And the other reason is I want to be on his left. I don't want him on my left anymore. In fact, I asked Brant, hey, Brant, why don't you move to seat nine? <laughs> So I didn't want Brent on my left either, but it turns out with Trevor in one, me in two, and Brant in four, we just had some fantastic conversation about poker and life and, and uh, stuff, and it was really, really an enjoyable night. All right, this next hand's a doozy. <laughs> There's a limper in the plus one. The MP2 makes it $30. Uh, Trevor on the button makes the call. I in the small blind make the call, and the limper makes the call. So the flop with $123 in the pot, unbelievably, once again, comes 932. This time it's rainbow. I check my top set. The plus one checks. The pre flop raiser makes it 60. Comes to Trevor. Trevor had this hand. Trevor raises it up to $150, and now all I'm thinking is, how can I get all the money? How can I get Trevor's money? How can I get the pre-flop raiser's money? So I think it's gonna look incredibly strong no matter what I do, whether I flat or whether I raise, but I'm gonna go for the flat and see what happens. I make the call, the plus one folds, and now the initial raiser thinks and tanks and tanks and thinks. and then makes it four hundred dollars. With sixty, one fifty call raised to four hundred. Trevor makes the fold and I jam it all in there. I'm all in. The pot is already over $800. He has $800 left. I don't think he can fold. Uh, he goes ahead and he does make the call there. All in the call. He has pocket aces. I have top set of nines. The board runs out. Jack of spades, eight of hearts, and I win the biggest pot of the night. That was a nice one. All right, this is what happens. I come to I come to Dallas. Mr. Bill just wins all the money. <laughs> Trevor's 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 the greatest luck charm ever. <laughs> you want me to move here for you? Absolutely. <laughs> All right, here's a fun hand between me and Brant and, and Trevor. Okay, I'm in a hand with Trevor and Brant. No talking during the It's hand. Donkey Boy. <laughs> it's Donkey Boy City. Trevor Savage is on the button. He straddles for six. Uh, Brant limps in from the plus one, uh, comes to me. Uh, I make it $20, and Brant and Trevor both make the call. So the flop with $63 in the pot comes Queen of Clubs, 10 of Hearts, 7 of Spades. I have a complete whiff with my Ace King and it checks around. The turn is the 4 of Hearts. Your action. 30. <laughs> I lead out for $30. Brant folds and Trevor makes the call. The river now with 123 in the pot is the 2 of Spades. Do 7 got there. <laughs> We're playing do 7 <laughs> All right, I'm going to check. I'm going to let you bluff at it. Check. I have a skin. Look at that. That's horrible. Who is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> I said we were going to get in a hand. Of course, I only lost $40, so it's okay. It makes sense that I would have 4-3 all series. That's true. So king, right? And this was a great example of just the fun night that we had. And even though it was competitive, we just had a lot of fun, yucking it up, all that kind of stuff. 
And Trevor learned one very important lesson playing at the hideaway in Carrollton, Texas. Tell them, kids. No one likes to fold in Texas. All right, Trevor had to go to his daughter's cheer competition the next morning, so he left around midnight. I then went from about $3,100 down to $2,600, and I thought, oh my gosh, maybe Trevor is the good luck charm. Maybe I can't win without him there. But finally, I played two more hands at the end of the night against Jell Stewart. He's a regular at Hideaway. He actually works at the same company as me, although we don't work on the same kind of stuff. Uh, I didn't record the first hand, but I got the second one. I am on the button with nine of hearts, 10 of hearts. I have $2,900. Uh, there's two limpers. Jell in the cutoff makes it $25. And I am the only one to call. The flop has $60 in the pot and it comes seven of hearts, eight of hearts, seven of clubs. Jell only has $115 back, and so he jams it all in there. I got a combo draw, straight flush draw even. So I make the call. The turn is the jack of hearts. I hit the flush, the river two of diamonds, and Jell shows an eight and mucks his other card. So I have a winner. So at the hideaway on raising the nuts night, I am into the game for $800, and after paying the hourly rake, I am out of the game for $3,050, a gain of $2,250, a pretty good night. I'm going to do a longer uh, talk on this subject, but I hope you guys know that blinds really don't mean anything. <laughs> Whether you're playing one, two, one, three, two, five, five, ten, it doesn't matter what the blinds are. What really matters is stack size. And at the Hideaway, and in Austin, Texas, where I play the Texas Card House, stack sizes are three and four hundred big blinds deep. So the games play very, very deep for what would be considered a normal 1-2 or 1-3 game. Much, much bigger than a lot of the 2-5 games that I play in at the casino. All right, guys, my sessions at the Hideaway were not the last ones with Poker's Rich and Famous because this past week I played in Austin, Texas at the Texas Card House with Solve for Why, Matthew Liu was there, and my next vlog will be with those guys, so make sure you don't miss it next week. All right, guys, I think that's gonna end it for this vlog. Uh, once again, what a pleasure it was to meet Trevor Savage and play a session with him. I hope, certainly, that I get to play again uh, with Trevor. Just a fantastic time. So, in the meantime, you guys have a fantastic, wonderful, and blessed week, and I'll see you next time. Bye.